and welcome to On The Move, a show highlighting what's going on in your community. I'm your host, Eliza Papazian. In this month's show, we'll get an inside look into the Grayson Power Plant, check out how you can share your ideas for public art, learn more about the city's disaster response, and so much more. The Grayson Power Plant has been serving Glendale since the 1940s, and it's time for an upgrade to maintain reliability. Let's take an inside look into Grayson. In 1937, the city of Glendale officials had the good sense to uh, team up with the federal government and actually buy into the Hoover Dam. We were the signatories. So we actually own power plants and power supply from different parts of the uh, West. Uh, and so the Grayson plant really is part of a network. In my opinion, the most important part of the network, being able to be self-sufficient in our power needs. And uh, I think the idea of revamping the plant, modernizing it, makes a lot of sense so that we are one of the key components and one of the cogs in this western grid. You know, it's, it's been a very exciting career. I've been here a long time, seen a lot of change in this place. I've started working my career in the power plant. One of the reasons Grayson is great for the community, and a lot of people don't realize this, it helps everybody sleep better at night. I sleep better at night being the superintendent of water and power because I know if something happens, we can take care of ourselves. It's nice to have the ability to control our own destiny in Glendale. The men and women who work on this system take a lot of pride and ownership in, in the work they do. So it's been passed down generation to generation that the people who work on these power lines in the power plant to be a reliable entity. And, and, that, and that is our goal, is to be reliable, keep the lights on. Whether they're climbing poles or doing subterranean work, keeping the power plant going, coordinating the grid, it's the actual employees that make GWP what it is. But the fact that we have a central power plant I think is essential to keep services going in the event of emergencies and we have to be able to respond and there's nothing better than having a centralized location like Grayson Power Plant to be able to get up to uh, speed, crank up and begin to produce power. You know, it is exciting for me to, to work here and to be around this place. I was born in Glendale, I was raised in Glendale, I went to Glendale schools, and now I work here. And I have a very strong tie to this community. My family all lives in Glendale. And, uh, you know, part of me keeping the lights on is keeping their lights on. And it's, it's important to me. I'm enthusiastic about it, and I've, I've loved working here for over 35 years. I think an upgrade to the uh, Grayson Power Plant, I think it's essential. No one can predict what the future will bring, and I think we control our own destiny with our own power plant, and it obviously has to be paired with renewable energy. And I think working to modernize the plant in combination with renewables, I think the future of Glendale is assured. Infrastructure upgrades are vital to protecting our community. Let's check out some of the recent Public Works efforts to help improve our city's core infrastructure. Glendale's Public Works Department is responsible for the preservation, maintenance and upgrade of the city's infrastructure for the benefit of the community. Here are three current or recently completed projects we are proud to share. Chevy Chase Sewer Diversion Project. Over the summer, crews have made significant progress on the Chevy Chase Sewer Diversion Project. This project will reroute Glendale wastewater from LA's Hyperion Treatment Plant to the joint Los Angeles-Glendale Water Reclamation Plant, saving Glendale approximately $1 million annually and helping to prevent backups that occur in LA. This project is important to the city's efforts to maintain a world-class wastewater system. Currently, Los Angeles Street between Garfield Avenue and San Fernando Road remains closed as work continues. Downtown Illuminated Street Name Sign Replacement In August, crews were hard at work installing new internally illuminated street name signs throughout downtown. At 23 intersections on major thoroughfares in downtown Glendale, new street name signs will make getting around town easier and safer for everyone. Phase 2 of the project is currently in planning stages. Proposition 84 Green Streets Demonstration Project 
This project was the city's first opportunity to combine multimodal infrastructure improvements with enhancements to water quality and stormwater management. The Proposition 84 grant allowed the city to install curb extensions, mid-block crossings, and additional landscaping and irrigation to the project area. An additional enhancement is the installation of bioswales, which are landscape elements designed to reduce or remove pollution from surface runoff water. This project will enhance the walkability in these areas and encourage more walking and biking to popular downtown destinations while improving water and air quality and increasing safety for all modes of transportation. If you'd like to learn more about the city's infrastructure projects, please visit glendelca.gov forward slash public works. The city of Glendale serves a diverse community and offers immigration, literacy, and ESL resources. Let's check them out. Hi, my name is Hala Shinuda from the Library, Arts and Culture Department. I'm really excited to tell you about new services that we're developing for new immigrants and their families in the community. Some research indicates that there are over 2.3 million people in California that are eligible to naturalize, but either they're intimidated by the process or they don't know how to navigate through it. In addition, there are other people who fall victim to immigration scams. At the library, we really want to try to help prevent that. This led us to partner with a fantastic community resource, the International Rescue Committee. They provide a wide variety of resources, including information about naturalization, citizenship classes over at the Library Connection, and they're also working with us to provide presentations as well as additional workshops to help people in their application process for citizenship. In our effort to provide reliable and trustworthy information, we've set up citizenship corners at multiple spots within our library system. The Citizenship Corner provides a variety of materials, including books, DVDs, and other materials to help with the citizenship test or also give an overview of the immigration process. In addition, we have some free materials such as practice flashcards, brochures, and information tips. Currently, the Literacy Department has been coordinating conversation classes and one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions to help people improve their reading, writing, and speaking skills in English. At the Library Connection in Adams Square, we offer free citizenship classes on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. These are offered in collaboration with the International Rescue Committee. The citizenship classes are a great resource for getting people prepared for the citizenship test. They include PowerPoint presentations, some course materials, and hands-on activities. Another component is the mock interview process. We have volunteers through the IRC as well as through the Literacy Department that work one-on-one -on -one with individuals to get them prepared. They have a variety of tools that they use, including flashcards and different activities that really get people comfortable, not only about the information, but about also communicating in English and getting their point across clearly. If you're interested in participating in any of these programs or in becoming a library volunteer, you can contact us at the Literacy Department at 818-548-6450. Glendale is dedicated to providing an efficient and coordinated response to any disaster. Let's learn more about how the city prepares and responds to such events. Recent wildfires, hurricanes, and earthquakes have been shocking reminders that disasters can strike at any moment. It is our duty as the city of Glendale to provide an efficient, coordinated response to any disaster that could threaten the well-being and health of our residents. Thankfully, the City of Glendale combines proactive measures in an emergency operations plan to save lives and property. Well in advance of an emergency, proactive measures have been put into place to minimize a disaster's potential effects on life and property. We strengthen facilities, abate nearby hazards, and reduce potential damage to both structures and their contents. We also train our personnel in activation and execution should a disaster occur. The Emergency Operations Center, also known as the EOC, is activated as the city's headquarters during times of crisis. Operating under a unified command, critical departments such as police, fire, public works, 
and water and power gather to share information, coordinate resources, and disseminate updates to the public. When this team is pulled into action, our first priority is the protection of human life. We'll rescue residents, evacuate those in danger, suppress fires, establish first aid stations, maintain order, and provide provisions. Your city staff will work to keep the lights on, water running, and the roadways open. Of course, with life and property on the line, time is of the essence. That's why we've designed our emergency response procedures to be flexible, responsive, and effective. All Glendale employees, for instance, are always on call for a disaster response. We also maintain healthy relations with community organizations, government bodies, and various nonprofits to give our city the necessary edge to fight a crisis at a moment's notice. For Glendale, the crux of emergency management is a proper delegation of a department's roles and responsibilities under a unified command. The fire department coordinates fire and medical operations while the police department manages evacuations and maintains order. The public information officer is responsible for disseminating timely information to the public and is the point of contact for the public, media, or other organizations seeking critical information directly from the incident or event. The finance section is responsible for maintaining records on personnel and equipment, payments to vendors for supplies and equipment usage. The Public Works Department assists other operations section branches by providing construction equipment and operators as necessary, provides heavy equipment assistance to units as required, provides emergency construction and repair to damaged roadways, provides flood fighting assistance, such as sandbagging, rerouting waterways away from populated areas, and debris clearance. The planning section gathers information from a variety of sources, analyzes and verifies information, and prepares and updates internal EOC information and map displays. The Glendale Water and Power section assists with the repair of utility systems as required and ensures there is sufficient water supply in the city's reservoirs for consumption or firefighting purposes. The Information Services section ensures that functionality of radio, telephone, and computer resources and services are provided to EOC staff as required. The Community Services and Parks Division is responsible for coordinating public shelter, Red Cross first aid resources, and other care and shelter related activities. The Logistics section is responsible for procuring equipment and supplies, providing food and medical support to incidents assigned personnel and meeting the transportation requirements of the incident. In any disaster situation, the City of Glendale is here to protect life and property. Although remember, in a major disaster covering a large geographic area, expect assistance to take days. It is therefore important for you to prepare yourself, your family, your home, and your neighborhood. The big one is coming. Not if, but when. If we all stay ready, we don't have to get ready. Glendale invites you to shape the future of public art in our city. Let's take a look at how you can share your ideas. The city of Glendale is very interested in the idea of enhancing the public realm with art. And because for the last few years it's had an urban arts fund, it's been accumulating funds that can help it do that. Community Arts Resources and Barbara Goldstein were hired by the city of Glendale to create a plan for public art. The goal of it is to identify locations for art, taking into account the nature of the place, the nature of the community, and what people would like to see happening in the future. The Arts and Culture Commission is the steward of the public art plan. They actually led the charge to create the public art plan. Over and above that, they'll be the stewards when the plan is adopted. So they're there every step of the way as visionaries, as stewards, and as people that get involved in the review of the art. Public art takes a lot of different forms. It can be as simple as a sculpture of a person to as complicated as an event that engages people in thinking about the nature of their community or the nature of their place. It can be a performance in a public place. It can be a mural. 
It can be a projection piece. It can be something that uses new technology. It can even be something that's on the web. There are a lot of different ways that public art animates cities. I personally have been very involved in projects that, that are streetscape projects where an artist gets involved in everything from designing permanent banners to benches to things that are inlaid in the sidewalk. There are monumental artworks when you think about places like, say, Millennium Park in Chicago, where people go to it because the artwork is so spectacular that it becomes a destination. There are artworks that are integrated into buildings and into various types of infrastructure. For example, the Gold Line, an artist designed the bridge that goes over the freeway. So there are a whole variety of different things that public art can do to transform cities. The public comes into the public art process in a lot of different ways, beginning with the plan. We're involving the public in the plan in several different ways. One is that we're having a major meeting on October 18th at the Adult Recreation Center. Another is that we have a great interactive website that people can use. The website is managed by a Boston-based firm called Co-Urbanized, and it allows any Glendalian to engage with the public art process. It's called myglendalepublicart.org. And what people can do is that they can go onto that site, they can talk about the kinds of art that interests them, they can come up with proposals for locations where they'd like to see art happen, and they can have a conversation about public art. It's already very active, and we're hoping that it will become even more so. One of the really exciting things about the community outreach aspect of our plan is that starting in October, there will be a series of signs that are posted in various locations throughout Glendale asking open-ended questions about what people think about public art. They may be questions that say, is this a good place for public art? Or what kind of art would you like to see here? And the best part about it is that you can text in to the, the telephone number that's on the sign and your ideas will pop up on our website. The public meeting on October 18th, that's really only the start of the process. The website will continue to go on. We will continue to hold meetings. And one of the things that's really most important about doing a plan is that it doesn't just land on the shelf. What you really want to do is to have a plan that people embrace, something that they can get behind and understand that it's part of who they are. We'd love you to get involved in the plan and you can do it by going to our website myglendalepublicart.org. You can respond to the signs, you can come to meetings, and mostly we'd love you to tell your friends, your neighbors, and anyone you know to get involved. That's it for this month's episode of On The Move. For up-to-the-minute news, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at MyGlendale. You can also stay informed by signing up for our free monthly electronic newsletter, City Connection. Sign up on the City's website. Thanks for watching and join us next time as we explore the interesting things happening in the City of Glendale.